yeah good morning everyone so we saw uh, us market uh, moving up uh, sharply yesterday uh, mainly led by a uh, few of the company reporting good results like goldman sachs and uh, uh, the dollar index which uh, came off uh, indicating that uh, risk uh, risk off scenario is cooling off uh, that has led to uh, improving uh, uh, us market and uh, that has kept the sentiment uh, strong and uh, even the asian market are seeing some positive trend today uh, even uh, commodities like uh, oil has seen 1 dollar plus uh, again today and uh, iron ore is flat and steel is a bear on 1% uh, today uh, news is that uh, the windfall tax which was imposed by uh, government on the oil and gas uh, and uh, uh petrol products uh, has uh, been rolled back uh, uh, partially wherein uh, export from uh, india from scj has been removed from that windfall tax uh, that will have a major direct benefit to uh, reliance and uh, make the situation more of a like a, a previous one wherein uh, na- apart from this the oil and uh, uh, apart from this uh, even uh, Uh, the tax on crude oil has been reduced from 23 to 50 to 1700 uh, 17000 uh, so that will have some positive impact on uh, uh, even ongc and oil india and uh, uh, diesel export duty reduced from uh, 13 to 10 and export uh, petrol export duty has been removed so largely will act uh, positive for the reliance and which can support the market Uh, in fact in reliance uh, last two days also we were getting some positive news uh, that uh, uh, the adani is not aggressively participating in 5g and also yesterday the volume figure uh, subscription figure which came uh, was also comparatively positive for uh, reliance as it had added around uh, 31 lakhs uh, uh, which was highest in last uh, uh, few months so overall uh, seems positive uh, for reliance which will support even the market so overall outlook for today seems positive for uh, indian market as well now last technical team to take up from here yes uh, thank you so good morning all of you this is party today the market is likely to open with a gap up by almost 200 points technically nifty is well placed about the 50 dma which gives a very positive sign on the daily charts uh as of now we are opening with a gap up at around 15 16500 above levels uh, which means that the nifty is going to touch the 100 dma fit probably at 16540 16570 levels we may witness some profit bookings but uh, any move up, uh, as of now whenever the nifty maintains a positive closing above 16500 the pullback rally is likely to be extended towards 16640 to 16700 levels for today intraday purpose 16500 is the immediate resistance zone any move about that level 15570 to 16600 levels can be seen whereas on the downside uh, 16420 will be the immediate support level below that level uh, we might witness some uh, profit booking which might even lift it back towards 16400 to 16370 levels on the downside the overall view will remain a positive as long as nifty sustains above 16300 levels on the closing basis coming towards the bank nifty yesterday we have seen a huge positive rally on the bank nifty front Uh, it was a bank nifty who has taken nifty on the higher side uh, looking towards the technical setup i believe bank nifty also looks very strong on the upper side i believe it has a potential to reach up to 36000 levels any more about that level will extend it this rally to was 36300 to 36500 levels on the upside where is on a downside 35500 will be the immediate support level any move below that level we may witness some profit booking which might take a bank nifty to was 35300 35100 levels on the downside the overall view will remain on the positive side itself on both the indices coming towards an nifty finance 16260 is the first resistance level any more about that level we are likely to test uh, 16340 to 16400 levels on the higher side on the flip side 16060 is the immediate support level any move below that level 15940 15900 levels can be seen on the nifty finance front coming towards the stock specific mcx really uh, doing very well on the technical front the stock is well placed above 
50 and 100 DMA, it's spreading in the pattern of the higher tops and higher bottom, which gives a potential uh, up more in the near term. I believe it has a potential to reach up to uh, 1420 to 1440 levels on the higher side. One can take a long position at the CMP. Stop loss can be kept at uh, 1330 on the lower side. Coming towards another stock, Quidilite really also looks very good on the technical setup. As of now, the stock is just uh, well placed above 100 DMA. It's trading in a sideways momentum. Uh, any move about 2300 levels will witness a positive momentum towards 2350 to 2360 levels. One can take a long position about 2300 levels with an immediate stop loss of a 2280. Uh, on the banking front, since the uh, banks are really doing very well from the last two days, SPI uh, look, looks very good on the technical setup. After a long time, the stock has just came above its 200 DMA and from the last two trading sessions, we are witnessing a positive closing about 200 DMA, which gives a very positive sign on the technical front. We believe it has a potential to reach up to 520 to 530 levels on the higher side. So those who are looking for a banking stock, they can accumulate a SPI at the CMP for the longer term horizon also. And for the intraday, the stop loss can be kept at uh, 485 levels for immediate target of 520. And for the longer term horizon, uh, I mean for the short term to long term, 545, 60 levels can be seen on the upper end. So these are the stocks as of now we are looking forward uh, from another sector. Uh, LNT also really looks very good as of now. This chart is well placed above 1500 DMA and it's on the verge of uh, touching the feet of 200 DMA, which comes at around 1800 levels. So I believe uh, this stock has given uh, on the technical front, uh, the major breakout was given at around 1670 levels flat pattern breakout. So I, uh, it has a very strong potential to reach up to 1800 levels. One can take a long position at CMP 1700 are the good support level. So one can take a long position into the LNT and the SPA. These are the good counters to accumulate into the portfolio management. From the IT pack, LTTS really looks very good. Uh, this particular counter, we have seen a sell-off from the last two to three months from 5200 to 2900 levels. Now it is just forming a, a rounding support at around 3100 levels. I believe uh, after a huge sell-off, we might see some pullback rally into to this counter. For short-term purpose, 3,300, 3,400 are the likely target on this particular stock. A downside, it has a support at around 3,100 uh, 3, levels. So one can take a position into this particular stock also, but don't buy a full-fledged quantity in this stock. It's a buy on deep strategy should be accumulated, uh, should be emphasize on this particular stock. I think that's it from my end. I requested what you guys take a call for. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Swati. Uh, now, looking at the derivative front, um, nothing much really to add. Um, PCR is uh, near about the same levels. Um, the base has shifted upwards, continues to remain around the 16,000 put strike. Uh, 16,500 call has the highest open interest amongst calls at this point of time. So we are opening 200 points up. We are opening near the resistance area. There can be some amount of uh, you know profit booking that can come in. Um, so if you have uh, bought positions at lower uh, levels uh, book certain profits uh, this is only for the day um, we uh, we might just see you know some amount of profit booking which can take uh, nifty towards 16400 or again and then again you know some buying will come in uh, so uh, call liquidation will take place from 16500 to 17000 call strike and once that is uh, into place you will see uh, buying again coming in very aggressively which can take nifty even higher so uh, this is kind of an intraday strategy. Um, FIs have also turned buyers consistently. Most important point is the VIX. As I have emphasized enough that the VIX continues to remain above the, uh, below the 200 day moving average and below the 20 levels, which is a, a big, big relief for our markets and uh, which uh, because of which we can see a linear rally that we are seeing right now. So uh, that is the most important part at this point of time. So, uh, you know, overall view is bullish only for today. Some profit booking is likely. Um, from the stock specific front, uh, metals have seen a lot of short built up and they are likely to see a good amount of short covering action. So uh, the likes of Tata Steel, Jindal Steel, JSW Steel, 
uh, these stocks can witness good amount of buying uh, uh, from uh, you know uh, for today uh, also uh, the it sector which was down for a long time that can see very aggressive buying as well um, so uh, you know a lot of cover, uh, shorts can be covered uh, in the it sector too so look out for the same uh, banking continues to uh, be very bullish uh, and banking sector uh, will continue to witness buying in the coming sessions as well. So uh, look out for the same. That's it from my side. I'd like to ask the fundamental team to take over, please. Good morning. Uh, TVS Motors has uh, committed 1,000 crores of uh, CAPEX for current year and uh, most of it will be going into capacity creation for uh, uh, electric vehicles uh, and also for expanding the EV portfolio. Uh, so the EV production capacity will uh, double to 25,000 units by the end of uh, current year and to 50,000 units by the end of next year, taking total annual production capacity to 6 lakh units. Uh, if we see uh, uh, as percent of total uh, capacity uh, by the end of FY24, then uh, EV uh, capacity will be around 15% of the total. And uh, specifically, uh, company feels that 30% uh, of the scooter market will be converted to EV uh, by the year 2025 and 35% of three-wheelers uh, by 2025. Uh, so we feel that uh, TVS is taking the lead among the incumbents uh, in uh, you know, uh, focusing on uh, EVs and uh, expanding uh, aggressively. So it is positive for TVS Motors. Kirloskar pneumatic result was okay. However, uh, we are positive on the stock despite quarter one being seasonally weak quarter. Revenue was uh, higher than the first three quarters of last year uh, at around 272 crores and it grew by 61% year on year. Uh, this should, uh, we feel, lead to uh, upgrade in earnings for the current year. Uh, despite higher top line, uh, the margins remained low at 10% due to higher raw material costs. And uh, once uh, they start coming down in the coming quarters, the margins will show improvement. It's a good proxy play on the CNG ecosystem uh, expansion by government, which provides good growth visibility over the next three to five years. Uh, we are positive. Uh, LNT finance result was uh, marginally below expectation. The credit cost came in higher at 3% against uh, average of 2% for last year. Loan book uh, was flat at uh, 88,000 crores. Uh, we have seen that since last many quarters and years, uh, loan book has broadly remained in that around that 88, 90,000 uh, mark. Uh, wholesale loans were down 13% year on year and still forms around half of the total loans. So don't expect any uh, overall loan growth to pick up uh, in the near term. GNPA also increased marginally from 3.8 to 4.1%. Uh, so we are neutral on l and Finance. Now, HDFC life insurance result was marginally below expectation. APE grew by 22%, VNB by 25%. Both were slightly below expectation. Uh, Exide Life's integration is on track and the merger is expected by uh, the end of current year. Uh, total embedded value increased by 9% year on year, uh, while on sequential basis it uh, declined by 1% because of uh, dividend payout as well as economic variance. Uh, stock is at same level since uh, three years now, and in the process, the valuations have corrected from uh, six times price to EV2, uh, around four times today. Uh, with expected growth being in line with uh, other private life insurance peers, uh, who are trading at around half the valuation of HDFC's valuation. We think in the short term, short to medium term, the stock should remain sideways. Uh, ICICI Lombard uh, general insurance uh, result was okay. Uh, GDPI uh, grew by 28% year on year and 15% quarter on quarter. Uh, however, uh, year on year growth is on a low base. Uh, and uh, combined ratio increased slightly from 103% to 104%. Uh, from a long-term perspective, uh, we remain positive. Uh, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Network 18 had posted its result yesterday, and the company has posted a declining set of numbers for the quarter with revenue uh, growth, uh, with revenue declining by 17.3% Q1 Q. EBITDA margins came at 3.4% uh, versus QOQ of 16.4%. Uh, Stock is trading at 36.1 times CT and EPS. TV18 has posted declining set of decline set of numbers for the quarter with revenue uh, degreeing by 15.5% QOQ. EBITDA margin came in at 4.6% versus QOQ of 17%. Stock is trading at 12.9 times CT and EPS. Thank you.
Good morning. Uh, Ambuja Cements reported inline set of numbers. Uh, sales volume came at uh, 7.4 million ton versus expectation of uh, 7.1 million ton. Uh, owing to ramp up of uh, recently commissioned Marwar Mundwa plant, uh, realization per ton came at uh, 5,400 versus expectation of uh, 5,543. EBITDA per ton uh, came at uh, rupees 926 versus expectation of uh, 940 per ton uh, as uh, higher power and fuel costs uh, kicked in during the quarter with an increase of 410 per ton uh, sequentially and uh, 1,700 uh, uh, year on year. Uh, margins have also slightly declined uh, to 17% uh, versus 20% uh, uh, sequentially. Uh, apart from this, uh, Heidelberg Cement had its con call yesterday, wherein uh, uh, the management indicated that the demand has seen some weakness from the government uh, side uh, in central India. However, the company expects um, FI23 volume to grow in the range of uh, 7 to 8%. Uh, the management believes that uh, power and fuel cost uh, should uh, soften from year on, given the increased availability of uh, domestic coal and imports from Russia at competitive rates. Overall, we believe uh, that uh, power and fuel cost uh, should ideally peak out by the next quarter and uh, reduce gradually uh, thereafter. Uh, cement prices uh, remained uh, flattish in uh, July as compared to Q1, wherein the average price was uh, around uh, 370 to 380 per bag. As far as the price hikes are concerned, the company would uh, monitor day-to-day -day demand to take a call on this uh, same, uh, especially uh, during uh, in the seasonally weak quarter ahead. Uh, we are neutral on this company. Uh, apart from this, uh, Grasim has approved uh, the plan to undertake uh, trading and marketing of all types of building materials, primarily through B2B e-commerce uh, platform. Uh, the company has approved an investment of rupees 2,000 crore for the next five years. Uh, with this, for a Grasim would be able to leverage the large B2B ecosystem with uh, Aditya Birla Group. Uh, this is uh, positive in long term for the company. Thank you. Good morning. So, Steel Strips Wheels India announced its result. The revenue was um, the result was okay. Revenue from uh, revenue grew uh, for uh, fifty percent on a YOY basis due to a lower base, uh, but was sequentially lower uh, by four percent. EBITDA margin, however, decreased to 10.8% from 14.4% on a YOI basis due to higher raw material prices. The company has announced a stock split of uh, stock split in the ratio 1 is to 5. The stock is trading at a PE of 13 times TTM EPS. Thank you. Yeah, apart from this, uh, Rallys India reported results and uh, uh, the results was below expectations, though the revenue grew uh, uh, comparatively better at around the 16% uh, year on year. Uh, but the EBITDA margin continued to remain under pressure. Uh, going forward, what we see that uh, uh, since the rainy season has revived very well and but got delayed uh, by uh, one month. Uh, so the benefit of uh, good rainfall will be visible in Q2. So for the near term outlook for uh, uh, release India can remain positive. Apart from that, uh, uh, HUL uh, came out with the numbers and the numbers were uh, uh, numbers were better than expected on account of uh, higher revenue growth, but uh, uh, the margins uh, were marginally below than expected. But the revenue growth uh, and the volume growth was uh, very good. Uh, if we see uh, revenue growth of around uh, 9, 20% year on year and 6% quarter on quarter, and volume growth also came in at uh, around 6% uh, versus expectation of 2%. So the revenue growth revival came up uh, handsomely, uh, though the margin uh, remained under pressure on account of higher uh, uh, material cost. And what company had said that the uh, uh, the margin, which was normally at around 26%, has come down to around 23%, uh, is likely to remain uh, uh, subdued uh, even in the Q2, mainly on account of uh, 
the inventory which they are holding of higher prices and the prices which has come off is not of the all commodity. Uh, so uh, the benefit of the decline in the commodity prices like palm oil and all will be visible in uh, Q3. So the margins uh, are likely to remain more of a flattish to uh, marginal up in uh, Q2, whereas Q3 will see the benefit of a decline in commodity though the volume growth continue to remain strong. So outlook seems uh, positive from a long-term perspective. And uh, since uh, stock has seen some run-up in recent past, uh, uh, the valuation has come up to more of a, a pre-COVID uh, uh, higher bend. Uh, generally, the actual trade with uh, was trading between uh, 45 to 50 times uh, one year forward earning of uh, in pre-COVID levels. So it is now at, at around 52, 52.5. So the upside seems uh, from that perspective limited, but uh, uh, from a long-term perspective, outlook is positive. Now results for uh, next two, three days. So, uh, day after tomorrow, Atul is likely to yeah, Atul is likely to report number. Numbers are likely to uh, show more of an okay set of number with revenue growth of just 2% uh, uh, quarter on quarter and uh, uh, margins are likely to show marginal improvement quarter on quarter. Uh, but uh, year on year, it will be substantial down. Uh, we had seen margins coming off from around 22% to 15% in last uh, three, four quarter. And now because of uh, the commodity prices bit cooling off, uh, we may see some improvement in margins in this quarter. Uh, but uh, the substantial improvement is, is still awaited. <laughs> then JSW Steel is uh, likely to report number here. Uh, uh, numbers are likely to show uh, decline, wherein a bit of turn expectation of decline is at, of around uh, 4,000 rupees uh, uh, quarter on quarter, mainly because of uh, the lower production in this quarter and also uh, increasing uh, cost uh, on account of cooking coal and uh, iron ore will be hitting this in this quarter. Uh, the benefit of uh, decline in cooking coal and all will be reflected in coming quarter, but this will have the peak uh, uh, cooking coal uh, cost in this quarter. So at such uh, expectation is that the margin will uh, EBITDA per ton is expected to come off from 13,500 to around 8,500 uh, on a standalone basis. Uh, but what we see from here is that uh, in, though the result is likely to be subdued, uh, but uh, uh, looking at uh, the decline in uh, cooking coal prices and iron ore prices and decline in the steel prices, the overall gross profit uh, in the current month, that is in the June, uh, from a spot prices is uh, uh, better than the April prices. So the trend seems to be reverting and now becoming more of a positive for uh, steel stock. So we are not incrementally negative on this and can see some uh, uh, positiveness in steel stock in the coming period. Then Ultratech Cement is likely to report number here. Uh, what we see that uh, the decline in EBITDA per ton uh, is uh, expected at around just 50 rupees, wherein in other company like ACC, Ambuja and all, we had uh, seen a decline of around 100, 150 rupees or so. Uh, so here, Ultratech seems to be reporting a better number as compared to uh, the other uh, cement players uh, on account of EBITDA per ton and even uh, uh, Volumes, uh, uh, though quarter on quarter, it will be down, but year on year will show some improvement of around 12-13%, uh, uh, whereas quarter on quarter, last quarter, the volume was substantially good at around 28 million ton. It will come off to 25 million ton in this quarter. Then uh, HDFC AMC is likely to report number. Here, the numbers are likely to show declining trend. Uh, with the decline in the equity market, uh, the AUM will have an impact and all, uh, corresponding impact on the revenue and which will also lead to decline in EBITDA. So quarter on quarter, we see 2% decline in revenue and 6% decline in EBITDA. 
then on 23rd uh, uh, icsa bank is likely to report numbers here the numbers are likely to show improving trend wherein nii is expected to increase by around 21% uh, uh, known uh, interest income is likely to show lower growth and quarter on quarter may see some decline as well mainly on account of uh, lo uh, low uh, treasury loss or maybe lower gain on treasury uh, income so this will have uh, marginal uh, dec uh, decline quarter on quarter and year on year it will be showing some 12 percent increase uh, whereas uh, provision is likely to come off substantially year on year by around 45 percent and pay it is likely to grow by around 40 percent year on year so overall result seems to be positive uh, for uh, icici bank uh, which is likely to report on the saturday then uh, uh, Navin Florin is likely to report number. Here, the numbers are likely to show uh, good improvement. Year on year, revenues are expected to increase by around 40%, and EBITDA is likely to increase by 50%. Quarter on quarter, also, we are expect uh, the market is expecting a margin improvement from 23% to 23 25.5%. Uh, so, overall, Navin, Ma Navin Florin result is likely to show good improvement. Apart from that, uh, their big project, which was uh, for uh, uh, cram business for Honeywell, has also started. So that will add up uh, further uh, revenue and profitability in the next quarter. So uh, direction-wise, uh, Navin Florin looks positive. So that's all from us. Uh, now I'll request uh, commodity team to take up from here. Uh, <clears throat> good morning, everyone. Uh, Kunal here. Uh, in commodities, uh, the major news is that China has announced today that they are going to uh, reduce the intensity of the lockdowns over there, which is sentimentally positive for commodities. So I think metals uh, are going to rally for the day. Uh, we remain quite optimistic. Uh, buy it dips should be the strategy for the day. Uh, as far as gold and silver is concerned, uh, precious metals, the dollar index continues to edge lower. And that will lead to some buying during. So most of the commodities are likely to uh, uh, trade with the firm buyers during the day. Uh, hand over to Harsha. Hmm? Ria, Ria, you can continue, Ria. Yes, sir. So hello, Ria here. Uh, good morning, everyone. So on the Indian rupee front, uh, RBI has intervened in the currency market in order to uh, stabilize the depreciating currency. Uh, also, recovery in the Indian shares uh, have aided the stabilization of the Indian rupee. Now, going forward, what the view on the Indian rupee is that uh, uh, the weakening will continue taking into consideration the shortage of dollar into the uh, current market and as well as uh, with the widening current account deficit, uh, the pressure will continue on the Indian rupee. However, it will be capped around 8025 uh, 8058 uh, that is what our view is um, uh, the dollar index have uh, uh, come down from the lows but of course the commodity uh, rising again will uh, cap some of the gains on the indian rupee so uh, 8025 remains the immediate resistance and uh, 7995 is the immediate support Breakthrough on either side will uh, determine the uh, directional momentum into the Indian rupee. Unless then, uh, the uh, momentum will be sideways uh, in the intraday sessions. That's all for today. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Harshal here. Uh, commodities are likely to uh, head up for the day. Uh, especially metals, uh, bion dips are rec recommended. Uh, copper uh, seems to be... Uh, broken the uh, 632 resistance level so uh, one can buy on dips with a stop loss of 625 the prices are expected to test uh, 642 645 levels uh, similarly gold silver also looks good as long as holds uh, 50,100 50, and 55,000 respectively uh, crude uh, buy on dips is recommended uh, buying around 7950 is recommended with a stop loss of 7870, uh, prices are expected to test 8100. Uh, natural gas could witness profit taking. Uh, prices uh, can test 570, 568 levels again. So, uh, selling on rise around 585 is recommended with a stop loss of 592. 
Thank you very much. Uh, that's all from us. Thank you. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for in-depth interviews of India Inc. and press the bell icon so that you do not miss our updates.